All right, this is Chaotic Crypto, where we defy tyranny. I want to start off a little bit, a little bit different um, sort of move here. Let me know what you think about it, but I want to kind of like have a little bit more organization to my show and uh, maybe not just focus on technical analysis, maybe focus more about um, really my story and mistakes I made. And I want to be able to... <laughs> I guess in a way, help whoever's watching don't make the mistakes I made, but try to get a little bit more wisdom and also reemphasize to myself that, hey, don't do this. <laughs> because even during the last bull market, I was telling myself, take profits, take profits. You have to take profits into the year. But I got kind of swayed um, towards the end of the year by emotion, people you know, saying I should do this or the media saying that uh, I got into a relationship and that kind of clouded me that I made some different moves in my career and that added distraction. So there's just a lot of things that will kind of come at you and you'll it'll try to sway you from the plan you made. People, I think the biggest mistake was me listening to people. You know, for a while, when the profits started coming in, people were like, hey, take profits now, take profits now, but it was too soon. You know, people don't understand charting the way you do. And then some people, and then when things were really getting hyped, they were like, hey, well, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy this. And that's when you start thinking about, okay, I'm going to take profits. I even had like the, you know, the cousin and the uncle come to me at that Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, about crypto. And that, that should have been my like, all right, time to get out. Um, you know, part of what also happened to me is I had financial goals that, just were not hit and the reason they weren't hit we'll talk about but it mainly had to do with leverage trading and me losing crypto early on that would have made me a lot more and it would have given me the ability to get out at, at, at my financial goals so this is kind of uh <laughs> i don't want to say this is the warnings or like the but I do have horror stories. I've talked about them before, but that was a while ago, and I mentioned them occasionally under my breath. But I wanted to talk to them, talk about them a little bit more. But I uh, wanted to look at you know XRP real quick, just real quick. The weekly looks phenomenal, but uh, we are getting a pretty big wick here. You know, we went all the way up almost a dollar, and then got rejected down. So it's you know, we're going to consolidate. More than likely, most of the hype is gone. But if we take a, a trend line adjustment on here, let's see. Yeah, we've definitely broken out of that one. I forget. Yeah, this was one of the trend lines. I mean, it wouldn't be completely out of the question that, that this hype just kind of dies down and crypto kind of gets boring and we actually come back down to this level of 55 cents. And I hate to say it. I mean, it would suck, but it's just something that you know, have to understand. It does happen. It could come all the way down here and then go up, right? So that's – I'm loving the exuberance. The fact that the SEC is getting slapped in the face and the fact that the judge ruled in the favor. Basically, it, it's going to unleash the floodgates of crypto. Um, so it's it's a great – it's great stuff. It's not going to happen immediately. Everyone's like, "Oh, I'm buy, I'm buy, buy." Like, it's going to take a year or two. Like, people are. On, it's going to take time for like these positions to, you know, r run rap and, and and like also, you know, I mean, the exchanges have already listed XRP, but it's kind of like it's not really going up any higher. So <laughs> there must be a lot of selling and shorting going on with it. I imagine. Uh, take a look at Bitcoin real quick, and we'll get back to my my little slideshow I pr I made for everybody. But, yeah, we're still sideways. I mean, I have to still expect that we might come back down to like 25, 26,000. It's, it's kind of looking more like it could be a bar pattern coming up here. So, and the, we did get sort of rejected. But it is still a bull flag too, but that, that was a pretty hard red candle. We're basically just sideways. Where where will we go? It's it's still hard to say, but it could still bar down. So until we break, you know, thirty one, there's really nothing to talk about. But you know, still my projections are thirty six to forty two k, possibly in the next month. But if it if we get rejected down, and you know, we're not going to start running probably until 
into September, October. September is usually really bad. I've been saying that. It's just been my experience. So we'll see what happens. I'm thinking that the exuberance will continue, though. And I'm thinking that July, end of July, could get real crazy. So hang in there. We'll see what happens there. Okay, back to my a slideshow. So I guess the intro of this whole thing is, you know, what are the mistakes I made, right? And uh, let's see if I can. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I, I just started this, so just bear with me. Um, yeah, so mistakes I made in crypto. Don't waste this opportunity. That's just basically talking about the market right now. The next six months to a year is an incredible accumulation time. And I said it before, but you know, this market's like this market may not be it, it, the opportunity may be less. Uh, in three to four years from now, like let's say the next bear market, everything's kind of bad again. Like you know, the markets are going to be higher, and it's going to be less money. Like you're not going to be able to probably retire in the same kind of way with less crypto. Like I think you could probably still take ten, twenty thousand, fifty thousand dollars for sure, and trade it well, and probably you know, it, at least buy buy your house or like take some time off work type of thing. Like invest in a new company, right? So it's just the, the time is now, the next six months to a year. Like people are like, oh, I want to start investing next year. It's like, that's too late. Like you might get a three to five X next year, but you invest now, you're going to be getting 20 X's, 50 X's, maybe even a hundred X if you get, find a good opportunity. So there's that. Uh, biggest thing. Yeah. So make sure you own your keys. If it's not your keys, it's not your crypto. Sorry, there's a little typo there. But uh, you need to have your own wallets. You need to understand that technology. You need to, I mean, I use mainly hot wallets, but like, you know, Ledger, Trezor, like, you need to have your crypto off of exchanges, especially at the end of the bull, bull market when everything is real hype, because you don't know if Coinbase is still going to be here four years from now. Crypto.com, I don't know if that's going to be here. You know, I'm still kind of curious if it's going to survive this bear market. So it looks like it's fine, but just be careful with Crypto.com. But I, I mean, I use uh, Atomic Exodus Kyber Crystal Wallet, um, Monarch Wallet. You know, it's an older one, but I, I just use other wallets, and that's just the way to do it. But uh, basically, my horror story is Voyager and Celsius. I had a lot of money in Celsius and a lot of money in Voyager, and I should have taken more profits and taken that crypto and put it in my own wallets. I should have just really taken profits and probably just gone into my own bank, but. How are you gonna know? Like, I mean, I was getting the reason I didn't was because I was getting so much you know, um, interest on it. I was like, okay, well, if we go into a bear market, at least I'm just getting the interest. And I'll just hold on for a few years. And well, then they go bankrupt, and you know, Voyager paid out one third of what I had at a bear market low. Like, you know, Gary Gensler, in my opinion, cost me tens and tens of thousands of dollars <laughs> um, from his negligence and just that, you know. Don't want to blame anybody. It could be FTX. It could be Sam Bankman Freed. It could be the administration. I don't know. Either way, it happened, and that's what it is. And just you want to have control over your crypto. You have to put your own wallets. And even Coinbase has, you know, you can have your own wallet in there. I forget how that works, but something we can look at. Uh, yeah, so Atomic, Exodus, Kyber Crystal. You can stake stuff on there, too. You can stake your crypto for... 10 to 20 percent on some of them so and it's real it's real earnings so it's not some fake stuff that celsius and voyager were throwing out but i think coinbase for now is safe but uh 2025 that's probably gonna be the end of the bear run or the bull run so so i'm a little bit a little bit out of it this morning uh don't leverage trade so i was getting in I guess trouble with this stuff, like just trying to trade. And like, I, I was making some money sometimes, but just, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm much better at it now. Even then I'm still just trying to recoup the losses that I had incurred during that. But like one example is I made a whole Bitcoin and then I got too cocky and then I lost that Bitcoin. And then some, that was at the bottom of the bear market. That was a, a two or $3,000 Bitcoin that I made. And and that would be worth thirty thousand dollars right now, uh, so it's just like God. He's just better off holding and just buying and holding. Um, but yeah, I use extremely low leverage. Don't do it unless you're professional. Like maybe you've like done a lot of work 
um, just studying the markets and paper trading, trading with like fake accounts and stuff like that. Like you do not, you just don't want to get into it. And like, it, it would ruin my Christmases. It would, I, I would just sit around just like looking at the charts. Like I wasn't going to pay attention to my family. It's, it's just not good. It's not, it's not good. It messes your emotions up. And you don't know the, you know, you can't predict the markets. You you know, with a hundred percent certainty, like things will happen. Like, Oh, you're good. You're good. Then all of a sudden a Corona dump and just wipes everyone out. So, yeah, you, have to, you know, that's what it is. Uh, don't underestimate the four year cycle or, you know, you don't underestimate, don't overestimate the four year cycle. Um, that thing, it, it's, it's done it four times. Uh, it's, it's going to keep on the Bitcoin havings will affect the whole crypto market because it's the largest player and, and it affects everything. It affects all the cryptos. When Bitcoin runs, then Ethereum will run and then Ethereum will spin it'll spill into layer ones like, like Atom and, you know, uh, Cardano and stuff like that. It'll spill into those and then it'll spill into the smaller ones that within those ecosystems, like ecosystem within ecosystem within the theme. So like, yeah, so it's just like, it's all kind of connected, but really Bitcoin leads it all. Also, as a side note, Litecoin's about to have its having in the next month. And I'm kind of wondering if that's going to roll pop. It's probably going to pop pretty hard, honestly. So just keep an eye out for that as well. But uh, yeah, have faith. Take profits 2024, 2025. And that's a hard thing to have. Like when you haven't been here for very long. I've been here since 2017. And like I have the faith now, like 100%. Like unless a meteor or a solar flare knocks everything out, like I have faith in this stuff. And so does BlackRock, and BlackRock being in there with the ETFs, it's just a matter of time. But also, to a side note, the ETFs may still take three, six more months to be actually be implemented. Like everyone's hype about them talking about it, but how long is that going to take for them to actually be put into use? So uh, it could happen quick, but I, it's, I think it's just a lot of hubbub right now. Uh, oops, yeah. Let's see. Oh, man. Sorry about this. I got... Yeah, here we go. How did I do this? There we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Again, still trying to learn this stuff. But yeah, um, towards the end, I was just talking about this. But again, your friends are going to be saying, take your profits. Or they're going to be saying, I'm going to do this. You should put more into this. Or, you know, the media is going to say, hey, 100K Bitcoin. And then, like, and then it doesn't happen. So just you have to watch out for all that hype. It's, it'll mess you. Like, have a plan now, right? If you uh, fail to plan, your plan is to fail. I guess that's what a lot of people say. So just, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Um, this is uh, more about your portfolio. I'm talking more about this. I'm always kind of just jabbering on about it, but this might kind of explain the situation a little bit better so you can understand. But yeah, just obviously don't just pick Bitcoin. You can, but uh, it's kind of like just picking gold. You want to have silver in there and some probably platinum and palladium or whatever. It's just like and some stocks, like stocks you want, you know, a diversified portfolio. But uh, it just don't pick one. I mean, if you did just pick Bitcoin, that's fine, I guess. But you're only going to three extra money. Like, you know, that's, that's great. If you're a millionaire, you have $100,000, like that's fine. You triple your money if you hang you know, on to it. But like, that's it's going to be tough. That's, that's tough. So... Yeah, and diversify your portfolios, your, your wallets and exchanges, but also don't over diversify. <laughs> like I made that mistake. I had like over a hundred different cryptos, and six or seven different exchanges. I couldn't keep up. Something would run, and then I would forget to take profits, or I wouldn't, or I wouldn't be able to sign in in time, or you know, I mean, the market, the exchange falters, goes down. Binance was another exchange that I had that had to, had to go through and undo a bunch of stuff on that. That was annoying. I forgot about that one. But, uh, yeah, you just want to limit your risk and have multiple wallets open in case something gets hacked, anything weird like that. You just, you know. Also, don't post your, your uh, seed phrases anywhere online. Like, 
do that on a piece of paper and do not even save it to your, you don't even save it anywhere. Um, I actually uh, chisel my seed phrases onto metal and put it in a safe. So that's what most people do, actually. So something like that would be the smartest thing. Uh, this is what I was just saying. I had 100 cryptos in my portfolio. Um, we're about to get into this, but choose 5 to 10, maybe 20 or 30, 50 if you're a big investor. And we'll talk more about this in a second. Uh, here's some examples of that. So you know, if you're a small, mid-level, large investor, here's some ideas. Again, this is not financial advice. And please hit subscribe, leave a comment below, like, and uh, I'm, I'm here really just kind of, I'm doing this for me, but I'm also doing this for whoever's watching. And I want, I want to help people get out of their situation. Obviously, if you're trying to invest in crypto and make a lot of money, you're trying to get out of your situation that's current. Or maybe you're trying to plan for the future or whatever. It's, it's not all about money. It's kind of about the ideology of crypto, but it's also like you know, people probably just working in the fields, busting busting their butt to try to make a little money while it's being inflated and you can't get ahead. And this is crypto is the answer to that. And stocks can be too, but you know, stocks are controlled by the SEC and a lot of the other stuff. And yeah, it's just, I think crypto, it's a, it's a free market, free secondary market where people can be free, you know, and, it, and that allows a lot of opportunity. So, okay. So not recommended a one K portfolio. The reason I don't recommend this is because you're just not going to see the whole lot of gains. Like maybe you'll 10 X that 10 K. That's great. Uh, you have a down payment. You have a, you know, uh, maybe you can get it to 20 K, but you can get a nice car or something, but that's not a lot of money. It'll pay off a credit card, maybe something like that. But if you're brand new to investing, you've never touched you know stocks or crypto before. I can understand it, you know. But uh, and also dollar cost average. I didn't say anything about that in the slides. But dollar cost average, like just putting in lump sum right now, the market's kind of high, and then they like, fall down 10, 20 percent. Like, oh, I wish I had bought later. Like, if you just buy every week, you know, and set your buys, then you don't you're catching it all, right? So that's that's what I keep on saying. So. Again, if, yeah, if you're kind of new, scared, don't understand crypto, you don't have much capital to put into it in the first place. I mean, I always these are the cryptos that I always tell people. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Link, Cardano. Uh, I put most of it in Bitcoin and, and ETH. And Link certainly is safe. And XRP, now that it's relisted, is, I think that one's going to be a big player this cycle. So something to look into. But I think, you know, if you put in 1K and you're, you know, well diversified, you should be able to bring this portfolio into a 10K. Now, if you're good at trading and swing trading and when Bitcoin runs and you know when to take those profits, put that into Ethereum and Link or Cardano, you, you could probably 15 to 20K portfolio, I mean, maybe 25, but it's just, you, you have to be really on top of it. If you have a job, it's going to be hard to do that. Uh, the 5K portfolio, now you could, if you're good, you could turn that into 50K. For sure, 50 to 75, maybe, maybe 100, maybe 100. So just, um, just you know, know what you're kind of doing. Pick 7 to 10 cryptos. I mean, I think ultimately you still want to hold Bitcoin and Ethereum with a smaller portfolio like that. You still want to have, you know, at least, you know, a third, one quarter of your portfolio probably in Bitcoin and Ethereum. The rest, you can kind of choose which cryptos you want to use. But um, in my next slide, I mean, I say, like, you really... You know, two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars, that's not bad to put it into crypto, but you want to put it in five hundred to a thousand dollars in each crypto, honestly. So even if you took the five K portfolio into you know a thousand into five, like these five, I think that would be safe. I think it'd be good to maybe have choose two to four um, more speculative ones and see see if you can you know, turn that turn that five K into a hundred if it's possible. Uh, for example, I mean I think with Cardano, I think I put 500, maybe 700. I may have put 1,000 into Cardano in total, and that turned into around 60K. So yeah, that's just one crypto. You do that five times, you know, that's $300,000, dollars $400,000, right? So you just got to get some that really run, and that's that's how you do it. Uh, 10K portfolio, this is probably one of your, this is probably, apparently the average investor has about 10K. I mean, it's someone probably mid twenties, mid thirties, or something. They, they want to get back. They want to get into crypto. They want to get into investing. 
a 10 K portfolio is kind of like your average, for, not to say you're an average person, but just the average of someone who is avidly trying to invest. So, I mean, in that kind of case, I'd pick 10 to 15, you know, if you pick 10, it's $1,000 per crypto. You still probably want to be weighted more in Bitcoin and Ethereum, but you could really kind of throw in some other cryptos like maybe Atom, Tezos, and, you know, Algorand, HBAR. These things, those are the cryptos that will really kind of help you out on that macro there. So, okay, and then you get your mid level. This is like a 25K portfolio. I mean, that, that's a lot of money, but that, yeah, I think that's. That's a car, you know, maybe half half a year's salary. I mean, that is a lot of money. But I think a 25K portfolio, you could turn that into almost retirement. Like in a 100K portfolio, you should be able to turn that into a mill uh, without even trying, really. I mean, the whole market is a $1 trillion right now. A 10X to $10 trillion is a 7 to $10 trillion market cap is almost given, given everything. So... 100k portfolio, unless you're picking really terrible projects, should get you to a million without even trying. 25k, I think you gotta try. You could probably get to a half a million, 250 thousand for sure, right? But uh, it's back to the whole life. investment only 500 to 1k into each crypto. I mean, I'm gonna tell you like maybe that could have worked. 500 dollars could have worked in the last bull market, but a lot of the picks like I've Subscribe to Tika Tawari, and he was saying $500 into some of these cryptos will make you a millionaire. No. Uh, that didn't happen then. It certainly isn't going to happen at this one. I mean, I think $1,000 could in a, in a good crypto will certainly will certainly bode well, but you know, you got to know which ones to do. And even then, you really you need to do more than 1K. Um, you know, if you're a 25K portfolio investor, you pick, say, 12 to 15 cryptos, and you pick a couple good ones, you're, you're set, right? So, but if you have a big portfolio, I mean, and you don't mind tra chasing the markets and being really up to date, checking in your portfolio a couple times a day, having up to 50 cryptos, I think is okay. Um, I think I have around 75, which is too much, but it's because I had over 100 from last market cycle. I'm still trying to clean it up and trying to decide what I want to do with them. So, that's that's me trying to fix myself. Uh, four year cycle will come to a close end of 2025. Now it could end in the fall uh, and it could end a couple months into uh, 2026. Uh, the bull market in 2017 actually went into 2018 with Ethereum and the altcoins. So you have to allow for three, three months or so to um, where the, the end could come. It'd be plus or minus three months. And, you know, I don't think we're going to have another double top like we had. But, honestly, my portfolio topped out in June, July of 2021. And that's like six months before the top. I mean, that, that, the end of that bull market was much more tumultuous. It was rough. It was very volatile. I think the last market cycle and period was very volatile. There was a lot of leverage. There was a lot of money floating around. It was really unpredictable where I think this market actually be – much more calm and steady as it's been so far. Um, so I think I think this market is going to be much it's going to be much uh, smoother. So let's hope. Big one: take profits. Take profits. Again, don't listen to everybody. You got to have your plan and execute it. Uh, what would you do with it? Diversify into fiat, real estate, stocks, four hundred one k, gold, etc. You know, saying in fiat, probably the end of the cycle is probably your smartest move. And if real estate, I'm kind of curious what real estate is going to do. Now, if we have a real estate crash, and that could happen kind of apart from the markets, I'm kind of wondering what's going to happen. Because, like, let's be real, millennials and the new disease, like, they can't afford houses. Like, I mean, you can't. So, I'm just wondering, you know, all these interest rate raises, is that going to end into a real estate heavy correction? And, like, it's a controlled correction. I'm kind of wondering how that's going to, what, what's going to happen there, right? Um, yeah, don't look back. Uh, like if, once you take a profit, say, into 2025, don't try to jump back into the market, really. Maybe you take like 1% or 2% of whatever you have. You want to try to trade and have some fun. Maybe, again, not financial advice, but 
you know, markets will come back a year or two later. Um, so if you left in 2021 into 2021, there's no reason to come back till this year, 2023. Even now, it's, it's a year and a half later. So there's that. Taxes, they're different all over the world, but taxes, the U.S., yeah, just just kind of uh, factor that into your budget. So even you know, if you make you know, $100,000, you have to think twenty or $30,000 is going to go into taxes. So just be ready for that. Also, like you know, I've made some big mistakes in my trading, uh, in my leverage trading. You could count that towards your, uh, you, could, you could sign, you could write those off towards your profits. I think just make sure you have claimed it over two, I think two, two years or three years. Not financial advice. You got to talk to a CPA or something about that. But uh, it's just something I didn't really think about. It's like, oh, wait, I lost all this money before. But I made all this money now. You're trying to tax me. Well, you can write off some of that stuff, supposedly. So anyway, uh, yeah, so think ahead. What will you do now, right? Like, are you going to move? Are you going to get a new job? Are you going to start a company? Are you going to pursue your passions? You know, that's uh, what it's all about. You know, crypto's about trying to invest in your future and getting you to do what you love and getting out of your situation, right? So anyway, that's... Uh, that's my first time doing a PowerPoint presentation since uh, college, so I, I never thought I'd ever want to do that because I hate it. And now I'm doing it. I kind of enjoy it, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, maybe we'll do a quick little recap, see what's happening here. 30,300. And I wanted to check the Fear and Green Index. thought I had it saved up here. Maybe I don't. And it's 56, around 56. So, anyways, uh, thanks again for stopping by. I hope this was somewhat informative and just trying to make the mistakes I've made and just really rethink about think about what your goals are. And, you know, leave a suggestion below if you have any questions. I'm going to have another theme for next time. All right. Peace.